What's going on everybody, Stained Glass Assassin? About three months ago, my old Dell Latitude, may she rest in peace, finally passed away. I say old because it was an E6410 series, which if I recall that is a 2010 model. I picked it up in 2011 when a local office down the street here was purging all their old equipment because they were going to be upgrading. So they sold it to me as an empty shell. All I had to do was put in my own uh, hard drive, upgrade the RAM, and for a very cheap price tag, I got a very nice laptop that lasted, well, for the better part of 10 years. But I watched her kind of slowly fizzle out over a, a two-day period, and then when she finally kicked the bucket, I was kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place because I needed a replacement immediately. I was so busy at the time. So normally if I was going to do, you know, get an upgrade or a brand new equipment, I would do my due diligence and, you know, spend a good week researching, you know, going online, watching videos, the tech junkies, reading articles, and then, of course, reading reviews from guys like me, the consumer. Uh, but unfortunately, I only had a day or two, so I had to, I guess, expedite is the, the right word, my research. So I only had, a, you know, one or two days to make this decision. And after some brief research, I boiled it down to three competitors, and ultimately I went with the Lenovo IdeaPad 5. Now, I chose this for a number of reasons. One, uh, the specs really caught my eye, which I'll cover in just a moment, but two, I hadn't had much uh, experience with Lenovo up to this point, but almost all the reviews and videos that I saw were overwhelmingly positive, so that definitely put me at ease, and the price was right at the time. Not to mention I bought mine from a local vendor, so I had a 15% voucher off, so that certainly helped too. Uh, but anyways, uh, I just want to mention real quick though that uh, this review will not be covering things like benchmarks, uh, transfer rates, frames per second, boot times, Although those are very important numbers, when I'm doing research, I'm going to leave that to the professionals. You know, I'm just going to give you my consumer opinion about my likes, my dislikes, and my experiences about this. If you want to check those numbers out, there are dozens of videos online. There are, you know, just endless articles and everything else. So not to say that those aren't important numbers. It's just that I'm just going to give my experience. So as for the computer itself, let's talk about the specs. The model that I went with, I picked up the AMD Ryzen 7, the 4000 series. Uh, came with 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM. It has, well, it's AMD, so it comes with the onboard AMD Radeon graphics. It has a 512 gigabyte uh, PCIe SSD. It has a 15.6 uh, full HD screen, two Dolby Audio speakers. It has an integrated webcam, Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.1. I'm sure I'm glossing over something else, but those are the majority of, of the specs there. And I should mention, though, that this particular model that I chose is different than the majority of the reviews that I read. Uh, the majority of those reviews either came with Intel chips, or if they did come with AMD, they were the Ryzen 3 or the Ryzen 5. And also, most of them did come with the uh, standard 8 gigabytes of uh, RAM. I'm not saying that's going to skew things drastically, but... It certainly would change some of the benchmarks if we were doing that, but we're not going to cover that. So just want to throw that out there. Uh, so while we're talking about it, let's talk about the computer itself, you know, the exterior. So let's take a look at the pictures here. I'm just using some stock images. Uh, you see here the top view underneath uh, has a single vent for both exhaust and intake. Now, I thought that was going to be a problem when I first got this, but I'll explain later that it wasn't. So that's a good thing. Uh, as for the keyboard, now, my old Dell Latitude had the keys that were essentially pressed up against one another, and you had to actually push the keys down to get them to type. Now, personally, I like the old-fashioned, you know, big keyboards, but when I saw this was the spaced keys, I was a little hesitant because, like I said, I'm so used to the old keyboards, but I gotta say that the response of these keys are very nice, and, uh, it took me a day or two to get used to it because you really don't have to push the keys down. They respond to just kind of sliding your fingers over and, and you know, you'll type. So after about a day or two, I caught on board and I actually really like the feel of it now. So uh, that put my mind at ease. Also, of course, with this type of keyboard, uh, it prevents hair and crumbs and dust from getting up underneath the, my old Dell. You push down on the key, you know, it exposed the entire underneath portion of that. So there was always hair and uh, crumbs. Not my hair, obviously, but cat hair and other things. So uh, that was nice. This also comes with a very nice backlit keyboard. My old Dell didn't have that. Now this has two settings. It has a kind of a low and a high. Now, I know it doesn't seem like it right now because I have this light on, but when I turn this light off, it's kind of dark in this room. So the low setting is very nice when I'm doing some typing, especially at night. 
So that was a nice feature. Uh, you also see that it has a more condensed uh, touchpad. Now I don't like, one of the other computers I was looking at was a Dell and this thing was like a loaf of bread. You know, the touchpad took up almost the entire palm rest. Not that I use this touchpad because I have a wireless mouse, but it's nice if you have to use it, but I really don't like the giant one. So that definitely was a nice uh, touch, reminded me of my old latitude. So uh, we'll talk about the ports real quick. We'll just go in numerical order here. As you see, number one up there, that's the Novo button. If you're unfamiliar with that, what that is is you remember on the old uh, optical drives, they had the emergency eject button if you put the pin in. Well, this is similar because if you're having problems reaching like a boot menu or if your computer is stuck in like a, a loop, this will bypass all that. If you put a pin in there, it'll take you right to the boot menu. You know, on Windows, you have to go through the advanced shutdown options and blah, blah, blah. Well, this just kind of bypasses that. So that's a nice little feature. I didn't even know what that was until I went online and took a look at it. Uh, next, you have a 4-in-1 memory card slot, and then next to that, you have two USB 3 ports. On the other side, you got your AC adapter, obviously, your charger there, and then you have a USB-C port, which was different than the IdeaPad 3 that I saw. It looked like they had three dedicated USB 3 ports. Uh, then, of course, you have an HDMI cable slot, and then your audio jack, so... Now I want to take a moment and address two common talking points that appeared in just about every single video or every review that I uh, read online. And since they were the two major talking points, I feel that, you know, I should at least address them, okay? Uh, the first, which is kind of the biggest one, has to do with the screen. Now, they claim that this, now this is not the touchscreen version, okay? I did not get the touchscreen, but they claim that this is a no-glare screen, that it can handle bright lights, but unfortunately, if I were to take this outside on the porch, the sun would wash it out. It's just too bright, it can't handle it. Now the touch screen, I saw a video, the touch screen version handled the sun just fine. This does not, okay? So that was a little disappointing, even though I never take mine outside. But regardless, the option doesn't, you don't really have that option. I know some people that do like to go sit outside and do some things on the computer. Uh, two, even though this is an IPS, an in-plane switching screen, this feels like my old 2010 Latitude it uh, feels like a twisted pneumatic screen, a TN screen, because if I lean just slightly forward, like right now I'm looking at it, it's darkened in the top left corner, all right? Uh, if I'm watching a hockey game and I'm over here doing something, I can't see the puck because I'm not right in front of the screen. So it's kind of a bummer that I have to sit right in front of the screen to be able to you know, get the full experience of what's on that screen. Uh, again, that feels like something that would come standard in a 2010 model, not a 2020 model. Uh, the second and the biggest uh, issue that most people have has to do with the color, okay, of this. Now, I'm not an expert on sRGB panels, pixels, refresh rates, none of that. So I went ahead and I wrote a few notes down from the reviews that I read here, okay. So uh, in the one quote review, it said that the IdeaPad 5 comes with a mere 54% sRGB matte full HD screen. And in their final conclusion, it was that it was a washed out sRGB panel. Now, what I mean by that is the colors they claim are very muted. And as I said, washed out. Now, I will play devil's advocate in just a moment. But when they did the reviews, I believe they had an HP and a Dell. When you put them side by side, you could definitely tell the difference in the colors, especially like the blues and the yellows. They really popped out. So against their competitors, it definitely did not look... Uh, as eye-catching. You know, the colors weren't as vibrant. Now, I just want to mention that I've seen the word flagship thrown around a lot in reviews, like from Amazon, Walmart, Newegg, Best Buy. That word was thrown around a lot about this particular model, and I don't know if Lenovo considers this their flagship, but every time I typed in Lenovo IdeaPad or just Lenovo laptops, this came up as one of the main, uh, you know, products. So I'm guessing it fits the bill. This is kind of the one that they were advertising as their, you know, cut above the rest uh, laptops. So unfortunately, to have a screen underperform that badly for a 2020 model, mm, I don't know what the right word is, but it feels like they're undercutting their customers because it feels like they did just the bare minimum to put a screen on there and that sRGB panel being so low compared to their competitors. So... But I will, like I said, play devil's advocate because one, if I would have never read the reviews, I would have never noticed the colors, okay? Because in my opinion, they still look very nice. They look punchy. 
Uh, I don't have any trouble with them. I've watched plenty of TV, streaming, live sports. I've played video games on there. Not once have I ever said, whoa, these colors look dull, or they look washed out, or they don't look good at all. Not at all. I've actually enjoyed my visual experience with this particular model. So as of for my personal experience, it's not a deal breaker. That being said, it doesn't excuse Lenovo for, like I said, undercutting their customer base by essentially putting on the bare minimum of screens. So uh, that'll definitely factor into my overall score. Now, the second talking point, which I have to put a disclaimer, I can't give any personal experience on this, uh, has to do with gaming. Now, I don't do any modern gaming. In fact, the most modern gaming that I do would be PlayStation 3 games, which I just have on the, on the TV there. I have tested out some PlayStation 1 and 2 games on the PSX emulator, and obviously I did my Wizards and Warriors review earlier, that's NES, so it handles everything I want to do just fine. And I do have some older 2010 games, such as like Baldur's Gate, the uh, remastered edition, but I already played that on my old Dell, so if the Dell could handle it, this should have no problem. That being said, the question always comes up is, is can this handle gaming? And the, and the answer would be casually, yes. On all the reviews that I saw, they tested well over a dozen games. You know, the common ones were like Fortnite, Grand Theft Auto, Tomb Raider, Call of Duty, Battlefield, Witcher, Assassin's Creed, you know. And for the most part, they handled the games well. There were a few games like Microsoft's uh, Flight Simulator that didn't perform so well, but that's usually a pretty resource-heavy uh, you know, application or a game, and some of the other games that were, uh, had some intense scenes in them, it definitely lost some frame rate, and the, the graphics definitely struggled a little bit, but they also tweaked the in-game settings and it fixed some of those problems, so I would say the casual gaming, this gets a pass on, but then again, if you're a hardcore gamer, you're probably going to want to go ahead and get the Legion, because that is the gaming version of the Lenovo laptop line, so I wouldn't be looking at this as a full-time gaming computer, right? So I thought I'd just address that real quick. Now, let's talk about a few more critical details before I talk about my personal experiences. So let's take a look inside. Now, this is a stock photo. My fan is not that dirty. Uh, but uh, inside, I was pleasantly surprised. Even though it was pretty tough to get the back of this open, I had to use two pry bars and kind of jimmy it, you know, to get it open there. But Everything's very easy to to uh, access. Unlike my Dell, the old Dell, you had to move a lot of things just to get to certain products. But this, very easy. You can see below the fan, you have the SSD. Next to that, you got the wireless card. Of course, the fan, the heat sink. Uh, below, the, obviously, the heat sink, you have the CPU. But I want to point out real quick down the, the corner there, there's a tray there that can handle an additional hard drive. It's a SATA hard drive. So if you want to put in an extra terabyte of storage, it's nice that they give you the option to do that. Now, not all models come with this, and I'll talk about that in just a second. But the irony of, of that is, is they give you the option to uh, increase your storage, but if you cast your eyes to the top of the picture, you'll see that silver rectangle. That's where the RAM is soldered to the motherboard. Now, I mentioned earlier that I had to expedite my research, and I use that word because I totally missed the fact that the RAM is soldered to the motherboard. For me, that's a big no-no. And I kicked myself in the ass because I didn't do as much research, the due diligence, I didn't have the time, so I didn't catch that detail. Every review I saw just talked about RAM, 8, 16 gigs, whatever. They never really actually mentioned in detail that it would be directly soldered to the motherboard. So uh, this is a big problem for a couple reasons. Well, one, for and I, I'll play devil's advocate again in just a moment here, but for guys like me, uh, I, you know, if we want to swap out our RAM, if I want to go get some G-Skills or some Kingston and pop it in there, I don't have that option, right? And let's say I bought the 8 gig model and I really love the computer and was going to do some more uh, intense applications with it and I needed to upgrade, I can't do that now. I'm stuck with whatever it comes with. Uh, of course, the biggest problem is is if the RAM ever malfunctions and it causes system-wide problems, swip, you know, swapping out RAM is probably the easiest task for a non-tech kind of individual. They can just open the backup, take out the sticks of RAM and put new ones in. You don't have that option now. So now, I don't know how easy it is to replace soldered RAM. My brother is a certified electrician. He plays with electronics all the time, so I'm sure he could do it. But um, if not, then I'd have to pay somebody for this task, which would normally be simple. And I don't like that. So that's definitely going to factor into my overall score. Uh, now, that being said, as, as I mentioned, I'll do the devil's advocate. 
the average consumer, regardless of getting an 8 or 16 gig, probably will never have to upgrade their RAM or swap out RAM if they want, you know, a better product. Um, you know, the average Joe is going to get it for office work, maybe some casual gaming, maybe some streaming. That should handle it just fine. So unless there's an actual malfunction of the RAM, they probably, you know, won't see this as a problem. In fact, they probably don't even know about it. But again, for a geek like me, I don't like that. Uh, I do want to mention real quick, I, I said that not all models come with the additional uh, or the optional tray there for the SATA hard drive. If you don't have this model, you'll get the bigger battery, and which will take up that whole space. Uh, you know, it'll take up the space where the drive is. The bigger battery, I think, is advertised as 18-hour lifespan. Mine, this one, is a 12-hour lifespan. Now, of course, that says up to because it depends on what you're doing. But I can definitely vouch and say that I've used mine on the battery for a good nine hours. You know, applications such as spreadsheets, uh, streaming, web browsing. And, ha you know, I've had no problem with it. So uh, no complaints on the battery. Although this sticker here, I know you can't see it, but it says that it has a uh, fast charge, 15 to 20 minute charge. I don't know if I've noticed that, but I don't think it's it charges any faster than a normal laptop. So, but either way, no complaints on that. So, so while we have this open, I do want to address just a couple more minor issues. Now, the first one has nothing to do with the actual product itself. It has to do with the incompetence of whoever put this computer together. So when I opened this out of the box the first week, I didn't have any time to do anything with it. I couldn't play with it. I, you know, I didn't have much time to install anything other than you know my new operating system. I, I use Linux Mint for uh, the majority of my stuff. So, uh, But other than that, I had to just use it as is. And the biggest problem I had was, is this thing was running hot, like from day one. And I mentioned earlier about the uh, fans underneath, you know, the exhaust and intake. I thought maybe it was clogged up or maybe I wasn't getting enough airflow because I usually prop mine up on like old CD cases. So, you know, I could slide my fingers underneath. There's plenty of airflow. But it the fan was always running. The keyboard was hot to the touch, and then when I was checking my temperatures, even at idle, it was just way high. So I was worried maybe I got a lemon, maybe something was wrong, or maybe it was just, you know, not a good computer. So when I finally opened this bad boy up, and I took the heat sink off, the thermal paste was everywhere. I mean, it was all over the die, it was all over the surrounding motherboard, and the worst part of it was it was so thick, and it was like like melted marshmallow, you know, when you touch it and it just lifted up and it stuck to your finger. So it took me a long time to get the alcohol out, wipe it all down, clean it up, and then I had to apply new thermal paste. Now I'm gonna do a in-review review here real quick. This is not a paid sponsorship, I'm just some YouTube bum, but I usually use Arctic, some type of MX or silver for my thermal paste, but I read a great review about Noxua's, uh, the NTH1, okay, I was doing some research on their desktop heat sinks and fans and I happened to run into this So I thought whatever for five bucks. I picked it up now The application of this was not as easy as advertised because you know Usually when you put the thermal paste on you put a little dollop down and when you pick it up it leaves a little pea size, you know uh, Looks like a slime from Dragon Warrior or Dragon Quest, you know like a teardrop Unfortunately, this comes out, uh, the only way to describe it would be like those black spark or those firework snakes. You know, when you light it, they kind of rise up in a cylindrical kind of tube. Well, when this came out and I pulled it away, it clung to the nozzle. And literally, when I pulled it away, it was just like a, a tube of thermal paste sticking up in the air. So not a big deal. I just took my plastic pry bar and kind of, you know, flattened it into a small ball and then put the heat sink back on. But I will say that the uh, difference was immediately noticed, okay? Uh, the fan barely runs now. The keyboard, this has been on for a couple hours, nowhere near, not even warm, okay? The numbers at idle and especially at kind of low um, stressing tasks were excellent. So uh, shame on whoever put this computer together and just literally splattered th thermal paste all over the place, but kudos to Noxua. Uh, I think that's how you pronounce it, Noxua or Noxua. Uh, they make a fine product, so I'm definitely going to give a thumbs up on that. Uh, the other two little problems I have with this, and it's just kind of personal preference, is this only comes with the two USB 3 ports. Eh, I know it comes with the USB-C, and that's getting more popular, but it definitely looks like there's space. They could have added an extra port on the side there. I don't know how easy it is just to add an extra, like I said, USB port, but two seems kind of minimal at best. 
Uh, and the other little preference that I have is, even though I do like the condensed uh, touchpad, I don't like when the buttons are essentially integrated beneath the touchpad. You know what I mean? I prefer to have two kind of rectangular buttons at the bottom that are dedicated left and right click. Again, that's not a deal breaker. That's just my personal preference. So, so enough about this computer. Let's talk about my experience. All right. So for a guy that was in a tough situation that had to get a computer immediately, take it right out of the box and start working, I can't really think of too many negative things to say about this. Uh, I already mentioned before about the sRGB panel being weak, but at the same time, if I would have never read that review, I wouldn't have noticed the colors being muted, okay? I don't notice them now. I'm looking at the screen. They look okay to me. They still pop out. So that hasn't changed my experience at all, my enjoyability of watching TV, streaming, playing video games. So not a big deal for me. Uh, I guess the only constant negative is that you know, unable to watch it from all angles, that is a problem. But at the end of the day, that's not going to necessarily give me, you know, change this from an A to a C, you know what I mean? Not that big of a problem. Now, for me personally, uh, the heaviest application that I use is Caden Live. That's what I'll be editing this video in. And even though Caden Live has its own problems, that, that's another video. This handles it just fine. As I said before, I've played some PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3 games. All my emulating has worked just fine. I've streamed a lot of different shows and movies. I've watched live TV and sports. I've had no problem with it, okay? My web browsing, yeah, everything, it's just fine. Um, I would say that this is probably a very good computer for, I guess, what today's generation would call the multitasking, all-in-one type of computer. Uh, you know, a college student could take this into the classroom, could use Excel, take notes on it. I know a lot of classrooms today, obviously you need to be online for things, so this can handle that. Then they could come back to the dorm, kick back, watch a little Netflix, handle some casual gaming, and you know, that's the college life. Well, at least when I was in college. Uh, but you could also do this for work too. You know, this could go to work and handle PowerPoint presentations, spreadsheets, all that. And then you could come home, watch the game, watch some Netflix or whatever. It can handle pretty much anything that is at a casual level. Like I said, casual video editing, casual, you know, uh, image editing. Now, if you needed a beefier laptop, you know, if you were going to do heavy CAD programs or heavy video editing, well, then this probably isn't for you. You're probably going to want to go ahead and get a more powerful computer. Same thing for hardcore gamers. You know, Lenovo makes the Legion. That's their gaming computer. If you're a college student and you're a huge gamer, this probably isn't the one you're looking for, but it will handle a lot of your normal tasks. So overall, I can't really say there's much negative about it. What I'm going to do real quick is I'll say, I'm going to take a whole point off for the screen issue. Yes, I've already mentioned that the colors don't seem to bother me at all, but that doesn't excuse Lenovo for essentially undercutting their uh, customers by putting out kind of the bare minimum for a product especially when the side-by-side -side comparison showed that their competitors uh, had a much better screen and a sRGB panel. I'm also going to take a whole point off for the soldered RAM. Um, again, as long as my RAM doesn't short out on me, I should be okay, but I don't like not having the option of A, upgrading, and B, swapping out the RAM should something happen. So I don't like to be hamstrung in those types of situations. But I think an 8 out of 10 is definitely a good overall review for this uh, laptop. So if you're looking for something that can handle some gaming, some work, kind of PowerPoint, you know, email, all that stuff, this is more than enough, especially because you got to remember that the specs that I chose are a little bit more than almost all the reviews. But even those reviews talked about what I am. You know, it's kind of the multitasker. It's all in one. And they gave them thumbs up. So... If you're looking for something along those lines, I cannot recommend this highly enough. I think if you get it, you should take it apart and take a look at that thermal paste issue because that could definitely cause you some problems. But other than that, I'm going to give it two thumbs up. So that's my review for the Lenovo IdeaPad 5. If you're using the IdeaPad 5 and I missed something or have any questions about it, let me know down below because if I glossed over something, which is quite possible, I'd like to know now because if it's a problem you know, I'd like to address it. And if you're not using the IdeaPad 5 and have questions about this particular model, go ahead and ask me down below. 
Uh, while you're down there, like and subscribe so you know when the next video comes out. And guys, as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.